Okay, in the last video we saw uh, one example of how we would do chain rule when functions of several variables are involved. And, I mean, the, the, the idea is very simple that if the, and your, your, your key to success is to draw the tree and then accumulate all the paths that come from that guy. So you know what, I'm going to right away go ahead and just throw a very complicated example here and see that complicated example is no more complicated than that in terms of ease of working with it. It's just as easy to process. So let's say w happens to be a function of x, y, and z. It's a function of three variables. And each of these x, uh, uh, x, y, z's, they're functions of uh, u and v. Uh, y is a function of u and v. And z is a function of u and v. And both u and v are functions of t. Okay? And, well, let's draw the tree diagram to see what kind of questions can be asked. So w is a function of x, y, and z, and x is a function of u and v, y is a function of u and v, and z is a function of u and v. And each of these u's and v's are functions of p. Okay? Um, now, we could be asked any question. We could be asked the rate of change of W with respect to U's or V's. Okay? Let's actually erase this for now. I'm, I'm going to first ask you some questions like, what's... Alright, so when you, if, you want, if you draw a diagram here, where you eliminate the intermediate layer, what do you have? W is a function of U and V. Right? It's a fun, it's, at this level, you have just u's and v's. So, somebody might ask you, what is dw, du? And why the curly d is the proper notation here? Because uh, w is a function of u and v, right? So, we need to, uh, this notation is a way of indicating that, hey, there are more variables involved, but I'm only caring for u at this moment. So, how will I calculate dw, du? Well, I've accumulated all the paths, so I have one path here, one path terminating here, one path terminating here, and I'll accumulate the, the, the I'll accumulate the derivative that comes on each path terminating there using chain rule from one D calculus. So you will have this will be curly D, curly uh, D W, curly X, because W is a function of X Y Z, so you need to use the curly notation times dx du okay is that clear plus let's go to this u w dw dy times dy du plus the third guy will be dw dz dz dy okay so that's, that's easy enough. Uh, if you had to do dw dv, right? It would be very similar, except the only difference would be these du's would be dv. Oops, sorry. This mistake here, sorry about this. This should be dw dz, dz du. Right? We were working with you, not dy. Okay. And so in this case, it will be dw dx times dx dv and you can go ahead and fill that yourself. Now, what if somebody asks you dw, uh, sorry, dw dt, okay, dw dt, okay. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. You've already seen this. You can pause the video if you need to. Alright. 
So at, in this picture, when now we go ahead and consider these as functions of p, think about w is just a function of p, right? And that's why I've written straight d w straight d t. And so what will happen? You will have um, you have to accumulate the contribution of each of these t's or paths terminating in t's obviously right so you will have <clears throat> let me start writing this I'm going to write it as one giant expression let me erase this part okay so you have partial of w with respect to x times partial of x with respect to u uh, yeah, u and finally, straight u du straight dt. Right? This is the contribution that comes from this path. Just that single, that's a single one from coming from there. Okay? Let's move on. Next one. Partial of w with respect to x. Partial of x with respect to v. And dv dt. Okay, so I've done two paths plus partial of w with respect to y, partial of y with respect to u again, and du dt. Okay, um, go, going on, partial of w with respect to y still, but this time dy. D, uh, dy dv and dv dt okay plus partial w with respect to z partial z with respect to u times du dt and final term partial w with respect to z partial z with respect to v times d v dt there you go okay and I'm, I'm not I didn't even get sweaty it's not that hard right so um, really the chain rule is the simplest it can get when you have this diagram in front in front of you you just just write the contribution of each branch and you're done and that, that, that's all there is to chain rule so I'm not going to do more examples in the next few videos, I will show you implicit differentiation where chain rules involved, and one example where we do related rates using chain rules.